Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to another game of A Feast for Odin, the Norwegians, here on Tabletop Simulator. I want to point out uh, a couple of errors that I made during the last game, just so that we're all clear on what can and cannot be done here. Uh, first of all, I forgot to include my full income. Uh, we had six points of income that I didn't score on the final turn, so in theory our score is six points higher, except that I made a mistake here. Probably a lot of you saw this when I did it, but uh, you cannot place a hide orthogonally adjacent to a skin and bones. And then I made so many plays after that that were dependent on this thing having happened that there's not really a good way to unwind it. It's just the whole the whole score is kind of illegitimate. Ah well, these things happen. Listen, 115 points, or rather I guess 121 points, was not going to be the best score we were going to put up to today anyway. So let's just go ahead and jump into the initial setup here for game two and let's uh let's do it let's put up a better score uh so one thing i do want to talk about real quick is how different solo games of feast for odin are going to be from one another there's not a huge amount of variance in setup you have the same action board every time uh, but the games are not going to be exactly the same uh, you can see here we were dealt a different starting occupation card and of course the occupation deck is shuffled in in a, in a random order now so Cards are going to come out of that differently. The weapon deck, of course, is random. Uh, we were dealt a different artisan shed as well, so that's going to affect our strategy somewhat. Uh, and then, of course, you have the, the randomness of the dice rolls on, like, hunting actions and stuff. It's not hugely different from game to game, but you have room to uh, be compelled to try different things. I think it works pretty well. Uh, that said, as much as I think Feast for Odin is a fun game single player, I think it's really great in multiplayer. Uh, hopefully be able to do some of that again sometime soon as well. All right, so let's have a look at our initial setup here. We have, um, first of all, uh, oh, I forgot. Mountains are somewhat random, too. There's like, okay, there's nine mountains, and you deal them out in a random order. You don't see them all each game. So, like, this is pretty different, right? We have this double silver mountain uh, at the beginning, which is valuable. Uh, so I was looking at this while I was eating dinner, and I was thinking about strategy. Uh, we have the barn as our artisan shed here, into which you can place a horse pretty easily. Well, once you have a horse, pretty easily get to income and also uh, bonus grain. That's the one by four uh, yellow piece. That seems pretty powerful. But on the other side of this, we have the lumberjack's hut. And I think that we're going to be trying, uh, we're going to be playing the game with the lumberjack's hut instead because I think it combines really well with our starting occupation. So the way this works is, at the beginning of the income phase, like just before the income phase, basically we get a triggered effect. If we place a wood or a stone into a shed at that moment, we receive a coin. Uh, the Lumberjack's Hut is a shed that has room for wood and also has wood uh, a wood bonus space. So it feels to me like we're going to be able to get a pretty good um, positive feedback loop going here. Uh, obviously, after the first two, we're going to have to buy ourselves another shed to put things in. But I think Steward is basically going to work out to be plus one income that also has two points attached to it. And that feels like a pretty good card. So the question really is just how do we take optimal advantage of it? Uh, let's go ahead and run the beginning of the turn. So phase one, this thing. Phase two, let's get our, uh, get our initial harvest. Phase three, nothing happens. Phase four, we draw a weapon card. We pulled a snare, which is a fine thing. And then phase five, actions. So if we're going to take... Let's say we wanted to try to get used to this right now. The first turn, let's see if we can get this bonus income. What we would need for that is to build the shed. So we need to spend a guy building a shed. We need to spend another guy getting wood, which is like a totally trivial thing to do. And then we also need to somehow play the card, uh, which is to say we have to spend a stone or an ore and one guy, or we have to spend two guys. We have six Vikings on the first turn. So honestly, that all seems extremely doable. And then what would we, what would we use our other two dudes for? Well, I guess one good question is, do we want to just use the take two resources from a mountain space? If we use the take one and an upgrade... Well, no, no, hold on. We, we have to get two wood, because we need one wood to actually build the shed, and then we need another wood to put into the shed. 
because the shed we're building doesn't even have space for stone, so we, we definitely need to have two wood. Um, hmm. So we could take three things and also draw two weapon cards. We could take three things and get two upgrades. Three things would be wood, wood, stone for us. Actually, wood, wood, stone, ore, plus two upgrades, and then because this space is in the fourth column, it also plays steward for us. That leaves us with two guys, one of whom has to be used to build the shed. But it also double upgrades two of our tiles, which means that we could push these uh, beans up to green to make those wool. We could put them right here. That gets us the two income right there, plus the effective income from the steward. And it leaves us with one guy, right? These are the these are the the miners. This is the shed builder. So what do we do with this man? What what is it that he can do for us? He could do flax to linen. Oh, hold on. I got we got to make sure we can eat. Because if we're planning to do a double upgrade that involves the beans, we have six spaces to fill here. It could be flax plus one of these things plus uh, a coin, since we're going to get a coin before the feast. I mean, we always get income before the feast, so that's not a problem. If we're willing to eat some silver, we have enough food. But also, we could have the one guy get us food, right? We're going to have stone, so he could do this. But also, he could, like, um... He could catch us some fish, maybe? Right, we pulled a we pulled a snare, so with two snares and a spear, we would have three chances to roll a three or less on a d8, which is pretty good odds. I think maybe that's the move? Because that would mean that we have another red good that we could double upgrade into a blue good, and fish plus, like, it, it's very easy to eat if we have fish. I think I like that. Let's start that way. Let's, let's see what happens when we do this. So, there's a non-zero chance that we will fail here. Uh, if we fail, the result of this action will be that we gain a snake and a spear, uh, a snare and a spear. But if we can just roll a three or less on a d8 here, I think we're setting ourselves up for a really, really good start. Okay, bad roll on number one. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Please don't fail this. Okay, Ooh. So do we want to pay snare snare or do we want to pay snare spear? I think I want to hold a... Spears are just more broadly useful. I think we'll, we'll pay both snares. Alright, so we get ourselves a um, an oil and two fish. Oil and two fish. And then we commit four dudes to this space. Take four things, double upgrade, and because we played a four-man space... We get to play a profession card, which just just seems very, very good. This also seems good. Having ore this early is pretty unusual. I'm sure we'll be able to make a fun use of that. And two double upgrades. So here's the question. What exactly do we want to double upgrade? I think there's, there's really no chance that this is wrong. And then is it one of the fish becomes a silverware? Let's see here. If we do that, let's say we're, we're going to build this. Let's go ahead and put this over here and have a look at it. Uh, if we build, if we make this into a silverware. This is a blue thing. What exactly do we want to do here? We want, we want to get that active before the end of this turn. Like this, this feels like a no-brainer. We are allowed to use red and yellow goods in here. So, like, if we plan to eat... Let's say we plan to eat fish and flax. We're going to get another flax in the next harvest anyway, so if we want to do flax to linen next turn, we can use that one. Then we... How do we want to do this? We could do... Oh, no, wait, hold on. Use the peas. We could do this thing. And then 
honestly, we could just use the oil right here. We are allowed to play green and blue things in here. That gets us another one point of income and doesn't make it terribly hard to set up the bonus weapon card either. We're fed. Could we get the mead too? Am I being too greedy? Well, hold on, we can't do that yet because we have to cover this space, but let's say we do this. We take three income, we put a coin there, then put this guy here. Then we have two more coins. We can't quite close up the mead. Well, actually, you can use ore. Yeah, so we could do this and put our three income coins here. That doesn't get us this bonus, but honestly, it's pretty good. And it means m most of the exposed space is adjacent to a blue tile rather than a green tile to reduce the odds of unfortunate collision. Um, honestly, honestly, that's pretty compelling. Oh, hold on a second, though. Um, this is a problem. If we use a yellow, a yellow good and a red good in this way, this space can't be either yellow or red. Maybe we could find a way to get the, uh, the income that doesn't do that. I mean, we could do it this way, right? This this is perfectly fine, because now this could be a mead. We could put a, a mead here for two points. And we're just not, we're not going to be able to have the weapon card income, or the weapon card bonus on the first turn, but I think that's fine. Yeah, okay. I like this. Let's say this is what we do uh, during the action phase. We move to income, and the steward thing happens, and it offers, oh, I got a Pay for my shed. You gotta actually take the build a shed action. There we go. Okay, now the action phase is over. We go to income and the steward card lets us place a good in the hut and receive a coin, which we totally do. And then we receive an income of three additional coins. I think this is a pretty cool start. Oh, sorry, so this this got uh, double upgraded to silverware. I had already done it in my head, but I didn't do it on the table, which is where it really matters. Uh, so then we have no animal breeding. We feast the things that we feast. Everybody eats, everyone is happy. And then before we move on to the bonus phase, we put you here. You have to put a coin down first, but we put a coin down first, then we put that there. And then the question is, do we want to place three coins above this, or do we want to use the ore? We're not necessarily going to have an easy time getting another ore, because remember, this one's about to be removed during step 11. And ore can be formed in import. I think we hold on to the ore and we just use coins for this. This means we have no coins at all during the second round, but I think... We will find a way to cope with that. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that start. So now we move into the bonus phase and we receive a mead and a wood. I really like having free, free wood income from the very first turn. That seems great. Uh, I have a tendency to, you know, obviously try to secure income increases early in the game. But it's absolutely reasonable for you to just like start the game by walling off the ore over here if you wanted to, or even the stone down there. Uh, it's maybe a strategy that's worth pursuing at some point. Okay, mountain stuff. This ore is lost, this wood is lost, and a new mountain is dealt. Okay, interesting. Uh, worth noting, the space that gives you two resources from a mountain right now is bananas. We will we will definitely be playing that. And then, uh, yeah, let's do the beginning of the next turn. So we get out our second color of Vikings. I'm very excited about this. <laughs> this is such a good start. Uh, yellow phase is the 1-2 harvest. And I really love having free mead. Free mead is uh, is a really nice thing. It gives you some good spacing in your feasts right away. 
Uh, and then uh, blue line is nothing. Red phase is show me sword. Okay, sword's fine. I said show me like I was going to ask for something specific. And then I realized, yeah, whatever. You know, give me a weapon card. I'll figure out something to do with it. Uh, so, actions. We would be very silly not to... Well, hold on. Am I certain this is what I want to do? We definitely want to take these two, but it's not impossible that it's better to, like, play this thing. Get only two things off of the mountain, but also get two upgrades. So let's... Hold on. Let's think for a second before we commit to anything. I would really like to play a linen right here this turn. Or a silk, I suppose, but, like, we have very easy access to a linen. It feels like it's going to be a linen. And then we need to have a wood left for the Lumberjack's Hut, or we need to spend a wood to build a normal shed so that we can start storing stone for our steward bonus. But also we want ships. Hmm. Maybe we don't need a ship this early this game. Oh, I can't build a shed anyway. Because, you know, because of the way the game works. Uh, yeah, so... I think playing a guy right here, I, I think that is sensible. I don't think we want to go super deep. We don't have a ton of stuff that needs upgrades. So let's do that. Grab the four silver, because four silver. Uh, four silver per man spent on an action is actually a really good scoring level. And then uh, we're also going to go ahead and do the flax to linen. That's not where that goes. You can't just put the thing in the... SB, come on, man. And then we have five dudes left. We have another income increase right here. We are okay on food. Yeah, we could do we could do grain mead peas for the food, or we could try to secure ourselves some additional food. Another thing we could do I'm not sure how feasible this is, but another thing that is at least a thing worth thinking about is that we could potentially build another sh uh, build a ship early, try to get like one use out of it, and then um, emigrate it right away to like dramatically reduce the amount of food we have to pay out over the game. That might be a good idea. Another thing that uh, that is a good idea early, that is a way better idea early than it is later, is to try to secure some kind of uh, some kind of breeding pair of animals. We have we have money and beans. We could go for um, a sheep thing really early this game. And I'm not holding an occupation card. It's nice to have an occupation card in hand so that you can try to judge the value of a. Uh, of an occupation action. Yeah, maybe we play this. I kind of like that. We don't have too, too much that we need to do right now. And if the occupation turns out to be good, we could potentially play, um... We could potentially play a fifth column space with two guys to get something cool and also cards. Uh, so, spend two silver and a beans to take two sheep. Pretty cool to have two silver to spare on this turn. Just gonna get a breeding pair of sheep who are a little bit, just a tiny bit more valuable than pigs. And a card. Show me something awesome. The Meat Merchant. Every time there's no harvest, you can turn a game meat into a whale meat or a whale meat into two game meat. That's not a bad one, honestly. I don't think that we'll be able to take advantage of it for this first no harvest, but we might be able to on both of the others. Let's see. Is there a way to get whale meat or game meat from the fifth column? There is not. Okay. Could we... We could potentially get game meat from hunting, but we have one bow... And I don't really want to spend a wood. So it's it's very unlikely that we'd be able to pull that off. But I'm just I'm like I'm looking at all of our options here. Because if we did successfully hunt, 
and then we use this action to play the profession. We could benefit from it next turn, but I, it's just not going to happen. If we go for this and we fail, we get a bow and a wood. Is that... that's probably not worth doing, right? Nah, probably not. So... With two guys... The Elk Hunt... We, we actually only have two relevant cards for the Elk Hunt. So that's not... I mean, Antlers is just not even that good of a card, really. Uh, we could do this thing. We could do this thing. We have that ore. Yeah, we could smelt. We could do this. Take two different buildings, uh, resources from the general supply. We don't have a ship, so we can't do that. Uh, I don't want to run out of wood. This is actually like a, a really good action. Get a whaling boat and then do an immediate exploration. That's like phenomenal. But I don't think it makes any sense for us here at this point. Maybe we just do that. If we did that, how much would it help us? Let's say if we've placed the linen here, if we took a thing that had the correct shape, we could maybe get another wood bonus? Yeah, like we could take this sickle. the sickle and put it like here honestly I like it. Is, it is it less than nine or yes it is less than nine so eight is eight is the best we can do that's the best size available to us yeah okay I like that so the question is are we going to do that with our two remaining guys to play Meat Merchant, or are we going to do it with one of the remaining guys and then use the other guy for something else? Is there a universe where... No, there's no way we cover up the three income space, right? Because we would have to generate five spaces worth of coverage. We do have two silver. So if I hold off on playing Meat Merchant, I do this with one guy, then all we would need to make the four income happen is three spaces of coverage somehow, but they can't be green. Is there a way for one guy to generate that much space? I don't think there is. One guy can sometimes generate three spaces, but they, but they are always green in that case. Well, I think then um, the answer is we just do it with two guys right now so we can play Meat Merchant and not have to worry about it next turn. The only other option really is... Actually, sorry, Silver plus Runestone is totally three spaces. Yeah, okay, so here's what we do. We play a guy here. He trades our stone... For a rune stone, plus a point of silver. Then we play our last guy here, where he trades our ore for the sickle. And we do this. Is that there? This here. Sorry, this is going to bug me if we don't get these inside the lines. But this here, and then we do this thing. Look at that, it's beautiful. Uh, and then we move to income. And in the income phase, right before the income phase, we get to put a wood in a shed, which generates us a coin. Steward is already maybe the best profession we've seen so far in the, in the entire series. It's hopefully going to generate us another... Like, if we buy one more shed, that's enough opportunity to use Steward for the entire rest of the game. So with this coin... I don't know, we don't do anything else with this coin. We receive five more coins as our income. And then... Uh, then we move to Animal Breeding. We have a breeding pair of sheep. One of the sheep becomes pregnant. 
we feast, which is not terribly difficult. And I think I'm fine spending the peas. Spend the peas to save a coin. I think, I think that makes sense for us. And then we move to bonus. And right before the bonus phase, we have to make a decision. Do we want... I, I don't think we want the weapon card all that badly, but we could actually just play for silver here and get the ore. Is that a thing that's worth doing? We could we could instead get the stone, I suppose. Stone's easy enough to come by. I think the ore is more valuable. You know what? I'm going to do it. I hope that everybody else is enjoying the music as much as I am. The, this particular song with the rain playing in the background of it makes me feel very calm, uh, which is a thing that I need <laughs> sometimes. Okay, uh, that is pretty good. So let's move on to the bonus phase where we receive a wood plus a mead and a wood and an ore. I don't know why all of the wood is coming out of the thing tilted. Is that my fault? Did I put it in there tilted? Oh no, it's actually, you can see, it's tilted on the thing. Well, it doesn't need to be adjusted. Except that I need it to be adjusted. And we still even have two silver. I guess we could... We could do this. You know what? Yeah, also before the bonus phase, we do this. Why not? Why not go for it? So we bonus phase ourselves a wood, uh, weapon card as well. And then we go into the next turn with no silver. And no ability to just take four silver for free. So I guess we'll see if I feel like I made a big mistake next turn. Uh, we still gotta find a way to play Meat Merchant, which, I mean, that's not that's not too hard to, work, uh, to deal with. Okay. Mountains get scraped... Sorry, another mountain gets added after that, and then we're back to it. Back to Orange Meeples. In general, in, uh, in resource-type games, it is worth spending early resources, almost any amount of resources that you can, to secure incomes uh, to generate more resources over the course of the game. Uh, and I'm not actually doing the math. Obviously, there's some point at which like, it does not make forty. It does not make sense to pay like forty dollars to get a dollar per turn for the next ten turns. But when you're dealing with things like ore, obviously it's a it's a little more abstract. It's harder to calculate the exact value of that. Hopefully, it's enough to justify my decision making. All right, this turn, eight Vikings. So there's no harvest. Uh, this is the first turn that we do blue stuff. There's no harvest and we have no food. That is something of a concern. Don't get me wrong. I am a little worried about that. And we have no money. But we have some options. Uh, we're about to get a weapon card. We got a weapon card at the end of the last turn. Okay, we got a spear. So we have some, we have some hunting tools here. Honestly, an, uh, a bonus income of a weapon card early in the game is probably going to end up being pretty valuable. It's hard to calculate the value, but it's probably going to be high. So what do we want to do here? We do have the option of um, getting rid of a sheep if we want to. Say if we wanted to play like this space, that's a thing we can do because the pregnant sheep will give birth even if there aren't, even if you don't have a, uh, a mating pair. And then don't think too hard about the fact that if we just keep those two sheep, they'll mate later. Uh, we have two bows and two wood. So hunting game is actually fairly easy for us. We also could do this thing. Take a fruit and then get two wool from your two sheep. That's not too bad. We could try to acquire more animals. Get more, um, get more point breeding going on. To be perfectly honest with you, three animal or three coins plus a grain for two horses does seem pretty good. So cows are uh, three points when not pregnant, four points when pregnant. 
they upgrade into these resources, which is cool. Uh, and there are there are a lot of spaces where you like milk your cow, and it's like very very efficient to milk your cow. Horses don't uh, don't figure into stuff quite as much, but they are considerably more valuable. They are double the value. They're a little bit smaller. A horse is ten spaces compared to a cow's twelve. But I actually think that horses are a little, like, tiles, a 2x5 is easier to use than 3x4. Sometimes you just run out of places where you can put a 3x4, as we saw last game. So I'm wondering if we maybe want to try to get into horses. They produce a ton of points. And then also, like, they can, apparently you can get grain from horses somehow. I assume you send the horse to the market and it meets its grain guy. And he's like, no, 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 you can't come. He's, he's real nervous around new people. Do we want Limerick? I'm trying to figure out, like, what? We have so many options now. One thing we know that we definitely want to do is build a shed. And there aren't actually a lot of ways to build a shed. Um, Stonehouse and Longhouse both have multiple options. But if we're going to build a shed, we, ha we have to play this space. So let's go do that now. That's a thing we're certain we're going to do. We spend one of our existing wood to get a shed, and then it is possible that we just don't want to spend the other wood. It's also possible that we're fine spending the wood as like we're fine spending the wood as long as we end the turn with another wood or a stone. So we could go back to the mountain. Hey, this mountain's bigger than the others. Now maybe this is from the expansion, and they just didn't print them quite the same size or something. Because we could go to this mountain and pretty easily get some stuff that would be high value. Although we don't need ore from the mountain so badly because we have ore income. Hmm. We're not too far off of being able to cover up more income space over here. And we've done a good job of keeping the green tiles internal, so we can just take anything and place it anywhere over here. I would like to get this expanded again, but like as you as you go on, it starts costing more and more points of resources to get single income upgrades up until like you get up to here. I'm wondering if maybe we want to just pick up an island and get some easier income upgrades. Um, it is worth noting for Limerick that these spaces are to the left of those, so you, you do have to cover these up. Still, though, it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. It is a 10-point island that has 26 negatives on it. Which blue thing is that? Oh, it's this. That's a really weird shape. I mean, it's actually it's actually kind of a beautiful, wonderful shape, isn't it? Yeah, maybe we want to try to make Isle of Man work. Or, uh, sorry, uh, Limerick. Limerick has game meat on it, which we would like, we'd like to have a source of game meat, because Meat Merchant can absorb it really easily. It has a nice 3x4 space for the end of the game, where we could just plop something down and, make, and get 12 points off of it. But then again, we could go Isle of Sky instead, right? Isle of Sky is a little bit less compelling with the bonuses, but it's like very easy to build up the first couple of points of income. Actually, it gets kind of expensive after that. That's a lot of space to fill. We could build a bigger boat and go for one of these. We probably don't need Sheep Island because we already have our breeding pair of sheep, and you always only get one pregnancy or one baby, no matter how many sheep you have, um, as you saw with the pigs last game. I don't think Islay's all that great. The antlers are fine. It's like a pretty easy milk. I don't think we need an island. I think is where I'm coming down on this. If we're going to go for an island, it's got to be Limerick. At least of the ones that are initially visible to us. And we can get Limerick with any ship. So. ASB, get to the point. I hear you saying. Uh, the point is, if we took... How many guys do we have left? Seven? If we took that same that, that same spot we took last time and grabbed two wood, two stone off of here, well, the space I would want I'd want to use to build the ship would be That's too many guys already. 
I'm just trying to figure out, like, we gotta, we, we want to play Meat Merchant sometime in the next two turns. We don't need it this turn, because next turn there's a harvest. We're gonna pick up Limerick. It's not actually super valuable to pick up Limerick until we can get the, um, the tools, right? Maybe I should focus on our food first. Sorry about the indecision. I'm just uh, now the now the options are splayed out before us. We have so many different ways that we can proceed, and I am, as you can tell, afflicted. Okay, maybe the way that we get food is we do a livestock market. We go to the the first livestock market space. We spend our non-pregnant sheep to take all this stuff, and then the the pregnant sheep produces another sheep, and we still have a breeding pair. We'd be paying two points for seven coverage tiles and also a salt meat, which probably just about fixes our food problems by itself. Salt meat, mead, I mean, not quite, but pretty close. I think I like that. Let's start there. So we will exchange the non-pregnant two-point sheep for salt meat and wool and... Uh, hide. Okay. And then we can, we can use these tiles to do some, some fun stuff. Uh, for example, we could definitely cover that four. Well, hold on. I said definitely. That's not actually true. We, <laughs> we still need kind of a lot of stuff. Um, and then, with six remaining dudes... What about down here? If we put the wool right there... Then we can put the hide here. That makes it really easy to cover that. Maybe I do like Limerick. So we just go to we go to the island small. We get like three things off the island plus two weapon cards, maybe? And then we have a ton of tools for hunting and stuff. Or we could do one and one upgrade. If we did one upgrade, we would just turn one of these blue so that it's easier to use over here without without blocking everything off. Because we can't afford to upgrade the meat. We have to eat that. But this actually totally works. We just take a wood, then take a whaling boat. Uh, the action over here that gives you a cheap whaling boat and lets you explore is not ideal for us. Well, no, actually, it totally works, as long as we make sure that we have all of the resources first. All, all of the, the stuff, sorry, the stuff that we want to use to play on, um, on Limerick. So let's say we set aside two guys for that, because it would be cool if we could do that and play mer Meat Merchant at the same time. You do have to have a coin, right? There's a coin in the cost of that action. So we have to generate a coin somehow. There's a lot of ways to do that thing, though. So what we would need to make this valuable is we would need one more thing here. So let's say we play this. We take... A wood off of one of these. It doesn't... It, this one, probably. And then we... No, no, this one. Because we want to get closer to the double silver. We take a wood off of this. We use that wood to build the boat. And then... We could, like, um... We take the, we take the upgrade on the hide to turn it into silverware. So that when we use it right here, it doesn't make it awkward to place other stuff. And then we need like an oil or something. We just need some cheap, which we could which we we could get because we do have hunting resources now. Although it's a little awkward that it's bow bow spear spear, because that means we have two points toward two different spaces. Okay, I'm I'm thinking that that's the right play. We go one dude in on this. Get ourselves an extra point of wood, plus an upgrade to silverware. Uh, this guy is the guy who's put aside 
well, maybe even these two, are the, the ones who are put aside for actually making the boat and doing the exploration. And then between you three, we have to get one more tile to play on the island, and we have to get a coin so that we can afford the, uh, the boat action. That seems like it should be very doable. Uh, one thing we could do to make the coin happen is we could just do this. We could cash in our ore for the turn right here. Make a chest. A chest actually solves all of the problems all at once. Yeah, that seems great. So we'll take you two up to here. Don't usually do this this way, but we'll turn an ore into a chest plus a silver. And then we have one guy left who is totally unaccounted for, who could get us some, like, if we use this guy to get just some basic food, that would be pretty effective. We could try to catch fish. Just, like, see if we can get lucky. Because um, oil plus two fish is pretty strong for us overall. We would not want to spend wood on that, so we would have to just roll the two. But if we fail to roll the two, we get um, we get uh, snare plus spear, and we can try again really easily next turn. I think I'm okay with that. The other, what are the other options realistically? We can't do this because we don't have a spare stone or ore. Uh, if you have a nar, you can spend two silver to upgrade green tiles. That's not an option for us. Pretty cool when it works. We could just get beans and silver. I have a real problem with this, and then maybe maybe some of you do too. Uh, when I see a space like this where I'm like, beans and silver and also milk if you have cows, uh, part of my brain goes, well, if I don't have cows, I don't play that space because I'm not getting the full value, man. I want all of the value. But honestly, beans and silver for a man is fine. It's not the most exciting thing in the universe, but it's totally okay. Is that better than Snare plus Spear? I guess is the question. I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna go for the catching fish. The maximum upside on the fish catching is so high. And I, th I think I want to do that rather than hunting. Maybe not, actually. And if we fail at the hunting, we get a wood, which we could definitely use for stuff. Yeah, let's go this way instead. All right. We have three rolls to find a one or a two. Okay, well, he's done it. I did hunting, yes, so the bows. That's fairly lucky. <clears throat> uh, okay, so hide and game meat. And then we go ahead and we put two guys onto this action space. Spend a silver and a wood, get a whaling boat, then take an exploration board that can be taken with a whaling boat. <clears throat> you know, like this one. So then, with all of this stuff, we're going to figure out what is the best, the best set of moves here. Uh, I guess what we can do here is actually just move to the income phase, do the beginning of the income phase step. We put a wood in a shed and receive a coin. And then we have this moment to try to figure out how we're going to generate as much income as possible. It looks to me like it's probably not possible for us to generate more than two coins off of Limerick, right? But can we get to two coins on Limerick while also getting to five coins from the home board? We would probably want to do this. Like, this actually makes a lot of sense for Limerick. And then we could get to five income from the home board. Because uh, you are allowed to just play over bonus spaces. So if we did this and then the hide here, and then the coin there. That works, but I don't think I want to cover the stone. So I think what we do instead is probably just get the stone income, right? We do this thing. And next turn, it's trivial for us to cover the four and probably also the five, and maybe, maybe get the runestone income as well. 
Or we could put these resources to use trying to get other stuff going from this board. We can't get the tools yet because there's no way we're going to be able to cover the three. But actually, we could probably... We could do something like this, right? We could make this game meet happen. Is that the way I want to do that? Debating whether we whether I've got the hide in the wrong position here. This gives us some coverage on the tools already. Make it a little bit easier to pull that off. Actually, I kind of like this. Yeah, okay, so we'll commit like that. Our income for the turn will be a measly six. I'm not exactly heartbroken about it. I think that's that's a totally fine amount for this point in the game. And then uh, animal breeding. Pregnant sheep gives birth to additional sheep. Have you ever noticed how all sheep kind of look alike? Then we feast on salt meat plus mead plus two coins, which I think is an okay way to do that. It would have been cool to like have some peas or something, but what are you going to do? And then, before bonus time, we have the option of placing four silver if we want, but it, there's not. We could place the four silver in a point-neutral way such that it secures the oil. Actually, probably correct to do? Yeah, I think it is. Is this the best way to, to use your income? I don't know, man. Maybe. Probably not. But all of those silver were point neutral, like that that feels like the thing we ought to do. So, bonus time. We get an oil and a game meat and a weapon card and a wood. Got a snare, which is fine. Um actually pretty unexciting. And then here a mead and a wood and an ore. And Stuart is just doing, like, massive work. What an incredible thing. Okay. Um, then we are on a new turn. Sorry, we are not on a new turn. We have to do this thing and deal out a mountain. Then we're on a new turn. So it's uh, Black Vikings this time. Which is interesting, partially for freeing up this animal space. But also for letting us potentially end the turn with this thing again. It's pretty cool. Uh, so harvest. There is, in fact, a harvest this turn. Oh wait, did I? I did play the two-man version of this. Meat Merchant totally got played at the end of the turn. So we have that set up. We don't have to worry about playing it this turn. Uh, we get some harvest, which is pretty okay. We have a ton of food. We probably have enough food for this turn and next turn's feasts already. Because we're going to get another game meet for free, and, like, it's pretty, pretty solid situation. Uh, Blue Phase flips over the Isle of Sky. And puts money on those things. Red phase yields us a spear. Oh, there you go. I guess, actually, a snare was not a bad draw, because that puts a bunch of resources toward uh, catching fish. Which we very well may do this turn. So we're real good at it. So big goals for this turn. I want this, which means we also have to cap off the... Uh, we have to cap off the income diagonal on Limerick. And we have to we have to fill these two spaces, these eight spaces, this, this, and this, and then also all the stuff around there. That's not trivial. It's actually kind of a lot of work. And because I used wool here, we're going to have to put something blue there or just some money. But once again, I've spent all of our money already. Well... We could use some awkwardly shaped uh, silver tiles 
to help us out with this, which means that we would have to actually get some awkwardly shaped silver tiles. Uh, the bad news is that a lot of them are three wide, especially like all of the good ones are three wide, so we can't use them to just fill up this, um, this tall, narrow space very easily. But if we got, say, like the helmet that go that could go right here, then we could put just some wool or something down there. What is the move? We probably don't need another island until we have this one under control. We do have three spears, so we could go um we could go whaling, I suppose. That's a thing to think about. Whaling definitely gives us some interesting options. Um, and it would draw us a card. Whaling would mean that we could turn a whale meat into two, uh, two game mates instead of the other way around, which I think is actually a little bit better because it's easier to work with the, uh, the two by three. So yeah, let's go whaling. We have two wood and three spears. We're almost, uh, wait, I forgot to actually take the whaling boat when, when we did the get a whaling boat action. There we go. I was going to say, shouldn't we have a boat? So yeah, let's throw three people onto whaling. Get ourselves an occupation card. Weapon supplier. When you play this, get four weapon cards. Okay. And it has two points on it. Uh, and then we roll the big whaling die. So we're looking for a five or less. Three is fine. I will absolutely pay three harpoons for whaling. So we get oil and bones and whale meat. You know what might be a cool thing to do is uh, get some upgrades. Some upgrades would actually be really nice. What's the best way that we have available to take upgrades? I mean, we could do this thing. Stone ore ore to silver. Plus two double upgrades, allowing us to turn like whale meat and cabbage or whale meat and game meat into blue tiles that we can then use to fill space. Although honestly, we might we probably would keep the whale meat and we'd flip both of these over because we don't have a three by three. Like we just don't have a spot where this is necessary. If we did that, we would still have two guys left. That gets us a bunch of, a bunch more weapon cards for playing our profession. I kind of love it, actually. Hold on. Do I want stone or, or silver or stone ore and force? I, it's definitely this one, right? Because we have ore income already. It's not like it's that hard for us to get ore. Yeah, that's... Beautiful. We play Weapon Supplier, which is two points and four weapon cards. Here, give me these. Okay, well, the game is speaking to us. Actually, like, all swords and harpoons is maybe, or all swords and spears is maybe, like, the best possible draw. Uh, and then we get two double upgrades, and we do, in fact upgrade game meat into spices twice. And then we have two guys left still, too. Um, let's figure out what we're doing exactly with all this stuff. So first of all, we have a ton of eating. Can we do an emigration in the, f in the last row here? Fifth column has the tiny emigration, which is honestly not that bad. We could also... Oh, you know, I think we want to do this. I think we want to do this at the end of this turn. But we don't need to do the two-guy version of it because we don't have an, a, a card anyway. So... And maybe we don't want to do that, though. The thing is, we got two spears back, so we could go whaling again. But we can't do it next turn. We could... Uh, I don't know. I'm a little torn. My, my thinking is we probably want to retire the whaling boat. We want to turn it into a bigger boat. So, that being the case, let's figure out what we want to do with this one other guy. We could just do a classic flax to linen, but we're actually a little food light. I mean, if we go grain, mead, flax, we're okay, but... 
We could do cabbage instead of the flax. Um, we could go for a fish. We could catch fish. We could catch fish. That actually solves a lot of the problem. And it gives us even more, um, even more green tiles. I kind of like that. We have we have two uh, we have two spears. We have some wood. We only need. Oh no, catch fish doesn't use wood. We have two spears and a and a, um, a snare. That's like extremely doable. Get out of the way. Okay, two. I'll uh. I'll keep a spear. I'll say this: we've gotten very lucky on the die rolls today. Uh. Just out of curiosity here. There's nothing broken with the rolling algorithm, is there? No, it's like it's randomizing pretty well. Yeah. We're just rolling a lot of low numbers. Listen, I roll a lot of low numbers. In most games, it's not that good of a thing. Wait, did I... No, I did catching fish, sorry. Uh, you go back in here. Me fish and fish and oil. And that's got us pretty food secure, right? Because now we can we can do like grain plus fish plus peas this turn, and then we still have a ton of food of both colors for next turn. Okay, so we're gonna take our last man here and do a yeah, whaling boat plus coin equals longship. I don't know who it is out there that is willing to make this trade, but Odin bless them. Okay, that's a fine way to end the turn. So now uh, we're heading on toward the income phase. Before we get there, let's do some placement. We actually have a huge number of things here, and we also have a little bit of silver. We're going to have to use some silver. We have two ore as well. So, like, this is two silver ore, like, silver ore or something. Uh, we can we can put the this thing here. And an oil here. This can be a coin. And this can be two ore? Because I think we probably want to... I don't, I don't think we need this ore. Okay. Then we do two coins here. This actually might still not work. Oh, well, keep in mind, we, we can just do this for right now, and then we can take income and, and still cover that before the bonus phase. So then, the question, can we make some income happen over here? The answer, no. Yeah, there's just not, there's not really a way to do this, huh? We could... Yeah, we could do it, but it would require, like, rearranging this stuff in such a way that we lose the point of income over here. It doesn't really matter. And if we're not going to get the income, there's no point in committing the stuff to the board just yet anyway. Okay, so we'll take an income of eight. I'm fine with that. Oh, sorry. Right before the income phase, we do place a wood into this thing and receive a coin. Does that change anything? Oil... Thing, oil, coin. No, we're still we're still a couple spaces short. Right. If we, if we put the oil here, the spice is there. Another spice. Yeah. There's there's no way to make it happen. Okay. Uh, income of eight. Income of eight is fine. Then we have animal breeding into a feast. Uh, the feast is already covered. One of the sheep gets pregnant, which is working out for us so far. We probably want to stop, you know, losing sheep because they're actually very valuable. But I think we, we made good value off of the one that we gave up earlier. And then we're about to move into the, uh, we're about to move into the bonus phase, so let's make sure that we cap some of these bonuses off. I want to actually get these. That one's pretty important. Uh, over here... How feasible is it for us to get this? 
I mean, if we want to get this, we do have to cover the four. So let's start with that. It's actually kind of awkward. Let's say we do this right here. We have six points of coverage plus the spices, like... We have just enough to set up a legal play here and also do this thing. Yeah, that's not too bad. There's a lot of external greed over here, which is going to make it tough to finish sewing up Limerick. But all of the outside here is non-green, which is really nice. We got to remember that this space has to be filled before we cover the six, but... Honestly, I think that's not too bad. Okay, so then the bonus phase happens, and we receive a wood plus weapon card from this island, or from this shed. We get a, a bow, which is cool. I don't remember where I was putting stuff. It does not matter. Uh, here we get oil plus meat plus tools, which is like pretty damn good. And then also we get woodstone or runestone and mead. We have plenty of food. Uh, we have plenty of building materials. We can now start potentially putting stone in the shed now that we've like built up a source of stone and stuff. Feeling okay about it. Okay, the ore is removed from here this stone is removed from there and then we also lose wood off of these mountains we get a new mountain and it is orange guy's turn i have to say i feel like this one's going better than the last one that said who knows maybe i've made some kind of cartoonish error cartoonishly absurd rid ridiculous error that will also mean that this game is not actually <laughs> not actually unfolding the way it looks like it's unfolding. All right, we have 10 Vikings. We have to figure out some kind of plan here. Well, first of all, a uh, harvest. So it is a no harvest time, which means we trigger the meat merchant and we trade. I'm pretty sure we want to go whale meat out, pair of game meat in. Although, I suppose there is some uh, some argument we made that maybe you want to like not be bringing in a ton of different reds because or a ton of the same red because different reds upgrade to different greens which then can be upgraded with this action but you have to have a nar for this anyway which we don't yeah i'm fine with it i'm fine with where we are uh no harvest the seaboard flips and we get some silver distribution and at this point islay is 15 points with 25 negatives, but it also has 6 silver on it. And it's not too hard to get those first couple of points of income. Honestly, it might be worth grabbing this now. It's a lot of money. Uh, we get a new weapon card, and then it's the action phase. And the weapon card is a bow. Cool. So do we want to go get that island? Uh, that island is... it's on the 2 space. We could go grab cork instead. Get shed income, which doesn't seem awesome. That's a whaling boat, and that's the that's the 2 by 5 green. I don't know, man. This doesn't seem amazing. Okay, so let's say we spend two guys picking up Islay. And then... Then we do some raiding, probably, some pillaging and raiding, because we have uh, we have stone, we have swords. We can make some stuff happen. We might even just commit the ore to the boat to increase our pillage. You can also do this plundering action. If you have two long ships, no die roll, just go get you a 3x4 blue tile. I'm not so wild about it. 3x4s can be kind of awkward to work with. I mean, obviously, sometimes... They're just 12 points, and that's great. But 
a lot of the time I have built up my board in such a way that I don't <laughs> I don't have room for a 3x5. Uh, we could... We could go get some other animals. We probably don't need other animals. I, I think I want Islay. I think we can make enough value out of it. It's actually, like, really easy to build up the income. And it's 21, it's 21 points straight up with only 25 negatives, so it'll be really easy to... Does it, does it actually have 25 negatives? Wait a minute. 4, 9, 10... Huh. Yeah, let's get it. So, let's, uh, let's commit two guys to that. We're not quite done with Limerick, but we can we can close up Limerick pretty easily. Let's grab ourselves a second island that has plenty of money on it. And then uh, we got to try to fill this up while also continuing to expand over here. Fortunately, the tools are pretty good at this sort of thing. What else do we want to do? We could get some wool from our sheep to uh, maybe make this a little bit easier. We could play this space to get a pair of pigs, and then this space to get wool from our sheep and also a bunch of other toys to work with. Uh, we do have green beans, so we didn't spend our green beans from the harvest. That would be all but one of our remaining Vikings. It would get us a... Uh, a card. Yeah, get us a card, then play a card. Which might be good, but also maybe we don't... You know, maybe it's not a good card. And that means we don't do... Uh, yeah, if we do that, we can't raid. Or we can't pillage. And I do want to pillage. I want to get a, a, a card. So, the question now is, before we pillage, do we do other stuff? Do we grab more resources so that we potentially have more, uh, more stone to add to the roll? We could grab two more stone pretty cheaply, and then if they don't work out for this, we can just uh, feed them to the uh, the shed for steward over the course of the, the rest of the game. I kind of like that. Let's do this. Take two stone. Now we have four stone plus three swords. I think we will hold on to the ore, because I might want to use it to craft. We spend two guys on this. Then three guys on that. That leaves us with two more, which we could potentially use to do a thing and um, and get a profession or play a profession card if we find a good profession card. Actually, none of the fifth none of the, none of the fifth column row uh, fifth column actions are actually all that good for us right now. If we spend the ore crafting, obviously that gets a lot worse. This wouldn't be horrible, I suppose. I don't know. I think we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and, and plunder though. Let's let's sorry, pillage. Let's go ahead and pillage. We have so many ways of boosting our pillage. Two's pretty bad for pillaging. I think we can maybe do better. Is that that's nine? Yeah, that's nine. I think we should probably sit on nine. So wait, what's the crown? The crown is sixteen. So we could get the crown. If we spent all three of our swords and all four of our stone, we could take the English crown. It has two points on it, and it's just an absolutely huge piece, which we could use to um, cover up. I don't even know what, but something. We could use it to cover something, that's for sure. You know what we could use it for, actually? Let me grab that. Does it fit? I think it fits on in Islay in a way that's actually pretty compelling. And put it right there. If we can, um, if we can fill this space, that's really good. So what we'd need like a wool or something here, which we could get, and then uh, we just need a, a yeah a variety of little things. We still have the tools. The tools don't really help with this. The t the tool is almost certainly just gonna be used over here. Um. I think we want to make that work. Let's try to make that work. So I'm going to pay three swords and four stone to bump our nine up to a 16. And we're going to take the uh, the English crown. 
And now the rest of our turn is all about um, filling that space. So we have five guys left. We do have enough silver that we can let the silver do some of the work, if we must. But obviously I'd prefer to do the lo a lot of this with um, with tiles that don't score us any points otherwise. If we... If we could um, snare, a snare would be really good here, but we just we don't really have that option. Uh, we could go raiding and just try to pull. We'd have to pull like a seven or an eight, it would have, and it would be just the raw dice. We don't have any boosters left. That's probably not so good. Um, the the oh not the seven is not the lowest value. A six could get us a rune stone. So we'd have three chances to roll at least a six for a free runestone. That doesn't really help all that much. You know what we need is some upgrades. How about we play for some upgrades? Um, if we play the three upgrade space here, and we flip like probably wouldn't be three game meat, but we could make we can make a green uh, two by three here. Then put the runestone right there, oil there, and just drop a coin. We still have to fill this space. Which would require the beans to be upgraded twice to become wool, or we would have to shear the sheep or something. We could do this thing again. That prevents me from building up, um, building up sheep, but it does get us an awful lot of tiles. We really want a two by two. I guess we could play this space. We have plenty of extra wood now. Yeah. All right, let's do that. Okay, that was weird. Those guys were here. No, wait, where were, the, where were these? Uh, I'm going to rewind time a little bit. This is an option that you have that only breaks the game some of the time. I to go back further. Oh, okay, I see. I clicked the button and it pulled two guys who were from, uh, from the board. That's why there were two extra guys. Okay, yeah. So we do this. We spend a wood, make ourselves a chest and a coin. That allows us to place the chest here. We do still do the uh, the two guys to upgrade three things. Like away from the board so that I don't actually hit any buttons. Uh, one of the game meets. It's turned into a skin and bones. We know that. And we definitely want to do this. Runestone oil then do I want this to be coin or ore let's make it well I only have one guy left I'm not gonna be able to use this ore oh no I could I could do that let's make it a coin yeah so we do we do for rules purposes we do all of this placement at the same time after earning those items and that Gets us five income off of Islay right away. And then we still have two upgrades left from that thing. We could turn mead into oil. And then probably we do just do game meat into uh, skin and bones again. And the reason I want to do the mead to oil thing is that we can, um, we can put these tools right here. Sorry, we want, we want to do this this way tools right here and then sandwich the oil in between and we can secure ourselves milk income. Milk is a nice tile. We could go after the antlers instead, I suppose. We probably we probably should. That's probably a smart move. Like do this. Contain the oil and then put a coin there. Yeah. And then, uh, what else? We have another guy. 
and I was going to use that guy to do this. Yeah. Okay, so we trade our we trade our remaining ore for a thing from the tongs less than nine pile. So there's a couple, uh, several different arrangements of five tiles, or the cross, which is actually six tiles. This is this is the best total coverage. Well, then we should try to make this work because I'm greedy. I mean, it's almost certainly the case that we just want to put it over here, right? Just want to put it on the big board. Because that's pretty good. And that would require us to spend four silver to make it legal, and all of those silvers are point neutral. I'm going to break this into a pair. We have to cover that space and this space at the same time. That not? Oh, no, okay, it went in. It really bothers me. It, I'm not so bad about everything having to be within the lines, but it really bothers me when they're like up on top of each other and not laying flat. That's pretty good. And then we could break this into two solos and get another ore income. There's going to be two more income steps that matter, so it's actually pretty good. Because again, this is a place where like where the silver is um, is income neutral or is point neutral in the first place. Yeah, I like that. I like the way that we've done this. And then, then we're done with our action phase, right? Yeah, like that was that was the last thing we could do, and also we're out of guys. So it's income time, and at income time we have done an awful lot of work here to receive 16 income. Not too much more we really could have done there. Getting getting the 7 covered up that turn was probably not possible. There we go, 16. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Okay, uh, animal breeding. Pregnant sheep. Gives birth, and now we have access to the uh, the maximum value version of this thing, which gives us a yellow 3x3 three three and also 3 wool. Again, I should probably be less concerned with always getting the maximum value version of everything. Uh, and then we have a lot of food space to cover, but we also have a lot of food. Probably we do like this. I think that is the most sensible approach. That leaves us with a meat for... Oh no, that's right. We won't, we won't meet Merchant next turn anyway. But yeah, I think that's good. Alright, so we feast that off. And then uh, we get a whole lot of bonuses. And of course, we could commit a bunch more silver to the board for additional bonuses. The question is... How much silver are we going to need for next turn? We could usefully commit seven silver around this milk and four silver around that. That wouldn't even leave us broke. Oh, also, at the beginning of the income step, we totally did this. Remember? Remember how we did that? We got benefit from Stuart? Okay. <laughs> we now have to, we have to either build another shed or we have to actually start using our stone for this. Um, I don't know that we need the milk, but also we should get it, right? Yeah, and every every silver we're laying down here has actual point value. This is probably this is probably right to do. We uh turn that skin and bones to a spices, we can cover that up and get uh get plenty of points for it. Actually, you know what I should do? I should break this into two twos. So it'll make this a little bit easier. And actually, I should break the other one as well. Yeah, whatever. I'll put down singles. Alright, we are ready to get some bonuses. Let's do that thing. So, uh, bonuses from Islay. We get two ore and antlers and milk. 
We really, we covered that fast, man. Like, way faster than I was expecting. The crown helps. Uh, and then from Limerick, we receive an oil and a game meat and tools and an ore. Uh, from the hut, we get a wood and a weapon card. We're going to end up with like a huge amount of uh, ore. It was a spear. Pretty okay draw there. And then from the main the main tile, the, the home board, we get all of the things. One of each building resource plus mead plus runestone. Okay. Uh, mountains give up some of their bounty, and then we are on to the next turn. And the next turn is a Black Viking turn. I will say that we've definitely gotten a little bit lucky this game with the professions. It is not, I would say, broadly the case that the profession cards are good or, or like, broadly usable. A lot of them are real weird and narrow, as you saw last game. Things like, honestly, Fareer, not even a bad, uh, a bad occupation. There are definitely worse ones. So we've gotten we've gotten lucky that we've gotten a bunch of them that are like make a lot of sense for us. Okay, uh, get back get back guys. Then the yellow phase feeds us a ton of bonus food, which we do not really even need all of. I suspect we're gonna have some difficulty using all of. And then um, the D board, the D board flips. Never mind, the D board is in our possession. But these two get money on them. And then we get another red card, and it is a bow. Okay, well, we're probably going hunting. This is the second to last turn, so we're not going to be able to get a ton of emigration done, probably. We could potentially this turn do this thing and then try to set up an opportunity to do the big emigration with our orange guys next turn i think that probably ought to be the aim because we can end up covering as much space as we ended up covering last time i think i think that would be wise so we also have just a ridiculous amount of ore we definitely want to keep a stone on hand it doesn't have to be this stone we can spend this one if we go get more uh, we have two different mountains where there's two silver pretty available, although they'll be available even more next turn. We could get them with the uh, the one item plus one upgrade space. Uh, let's see. We could go for this, potentially. That's a fair amount of coverage. Do we want to do this thing? Sorry, this thing. Three Vikings committed for three wool plus a ridiculously huge food card. Or a ridiculously huge food tile. And an occupation card. I'm honestly not certain if I think that's worthwhile. I'm just thinking... Um... The wool is a little hard to... I guess if we get the wool and then we upgrade a bunch of it, we, we don't need to... Yeah, it's probably worth doing. Let's do that first. So we'll we'll get an occupation card and we'll know if it's a thing that we potentially want to play. We don't really need this fruit and I don't have any idea what we're going to do with it. Uh, and then three wool. Because again, like, effectively... Three wool for three guys is like four points per guy, and that's that's a pretty decent standard. Show me occupation card. When there is no harvest, you may trade two oil for a spices. Wow. And that has points on it, huh? Well, we should play this and get an oil uh, before, the, before the end of the turn so that we can benefit from that once. That's pretty good. That card ends up being uh, like functionally four points at least depending on what the value of the oil was. and I mean, it's it's a little more complicated than that, but yeah, that's pretty good. Um, 
also, what else do we do? <laughs> like, what else? We need to cover up some, some minus spaces on the home board, obviously. We have two whole turns left. One of my, one of my questions is, what are we going to do with all this food? Because we don't need to eat it all. And we can't upgrade it all. It's too damn many upgrades. So do we want to try to acquire, like, a longhouse, maybe? Uh, we could acquire a longhouse by this action, where we go two stone, two wood for longhouse plus ship. And that does set us up for, for good stuff. Actually, that's probably worth doing. So we have plenty of wood. We would have to acquire a couple of stone, though. We, we would want two stone, because we want to still have a stone at the end of the turn. So it may well be the case that the smart move here is to play that space again, which we have done, I believe, every single time we've had the Black Vikings available. Like, it's good, right? It gets the Spice Merchant on the table. It gives me wood, wood, stone, stone, no matter where I use it, but I think we do it here to expose the silver. Or there's already going to be one exposed silver in so many places, Yeah, this doesn't really matter. I'm going to do this just so there's exposed ore somewhere in case we care about that. And then I have all of this damn wood, which we do not need. We'll buy another shed or something at some point. Um, so let's go ahead and... Oh, we get the, the double upgrades, right. So we get to turn some of, some of this stuff green. It's definitely at least one fruits. One fruits gets double upgraded to robe... And then is it game meat becomes spices? It might be. So I'm just thinking like upgrading this also to a robe doesn't actually feel that great. I guess we have a ton of space left on the home board. You know what? I am going to do that. Obviously, we'll want to turn these into treasure chests before we use both of them. We can put a we can put one three by three green down here without hurting anything, probably. Uh, and then we have four guys left. We still want to acquire an oil somehow. Oh, I should probably um, actually do that thing I was planning on doing, though, right? Like we were going to do this. I guess we don't have to do it with these guys. We have the resources available now. We could We could do that with the orange guys next turn before cashing in the ship. So with these guys right now, instead, what we do is I want to emigrate this longship. Now, while it costs um, six money instead of seven. Just so happens we have six money. We do that to lessen our food, uh, our food weight. And then we, the only thing we really need to do right this second is get an oil. Probably the the smart way to get the oil is to catch fish. Yeah, we're not we're not gonna make whaling happen, and honestly, I don't know that whaling I don't know that we would even want to whale. We definitely have the resources to catch some damn fish. Actually, we kinda don't, do we? Because we need to um We can't we can't uh, put wood in that. We have the resources necessary to force a success on hunting. We do not have the resources to force success on catching fish. So maybe the way that we get to having another oil is... Um, boy, what? what? What is it? Is it playing this? We upgrade, uh, we upgrade mead into oil? That doesn't feel right. Ah, uh, see, if I had if I had taken my four things from here, that's a much better play. I was not thinking there was any chance we were going to play this space this turn. I thought it was a thing we were going to do with the orange guys. Well, oops. Still, that's like, ore plus oil is actually not that bad. I know we have a ton of ore, but we could, like, ore is always useful. So yeah, we take one upgrade to push this up to oil. And then we have one guy left. We could have just tried the fishing first, I suppose. But I think I would rather have this guy be like... Flax to linen or something. That, this, this guy should just be flax to linen. Let's just get another scoring tile. 
then we'll worry about stuff later. We'll get um we'll get another shed next turn probably. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so flax becomes linen, and we're like we are awash in green tiles. So now we are headed toward income. Let's figure out exactly what changes we can make toward income. All of this ore is potentially going to be very useful here. So let's make a couple of big plays. Big spacing plays. Um, not necessarily the case that we need to play both of these, but we, like, we definitely want to cover up as much as we can here. So if we... Let's see. We put the tools right here as a spacer. We just put an ore in the middle, if that makes sense. We'll see. Uh, we actually could use the antlers right here. Let's put the ore there to break that shape up. And then, say, like... Wool. Wool. This. Right, we do like, um, so that would require, in order for that to work right now, we had to put down a ton of ore on the table. I think it's okay. We put down all five of our, uh, all five of our wool and that's a, or all five of our ore and that's a legal play. Get in there. Get in that space. Ah, sorry. Oh, you know what? It's crooked, but it's flat. It'll do. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so that, that legally covers up the nine. I think I've actually spaced all our green tiles out in a legal way this time. We'll have to fill that before we can take the 12, but that's not a thing we can do this turn anyway. We just don't have enough blue tiles. Yeah, I think that's fine. That's a pretty good amount of income, so we get... Um, 21? Yeah, that's a pretty good amount of income. Oh, sorry, at the beginning of the income phase, we put a stone in a shed and receive a coin. And then we receive 21 income. I'm going to take a 10 here. Eighteen, twenty-one income, and we'll break stuff down as we got to break stuff down. We'll see. Okay, feels pretty all right. And then we have animal breeding. Sheep gets pregnant. And then we have a feast that we have to fulfill, which should not be an issue. I have no problem using grain for this. So it's like grain, milk, um... Is it, is it game meat, grain? No, it's probably, it's probably just this, right? It feels like we're wasting space a little bit with all that stuff being taller than one, but. No, I think that's fine. Okay. <clears throat> so we feast on cabbage and grain and milk. Can you imagine a more delicious meal? And then we take our bonuses, which are considerable. So from Islay, we get a milk. And an oil. Oh yeah, I didn't have to. Or sorry, we don't get an oil from Islay. What am I? What am I looking at here? Uh, we get a. We get a antlers. I didn't actually have to secure a second oil because we were going to get one during the income step from Limerick. Well, that's a small mistake. We also get two ore from Islay, and then we get from here that third oil I was talking about, and also a another game meat because you can never have enough. And also some tools. And also another ore. And then from the home board, we get a building resource of each type, plus a mead, plus a runestone. And then from, uh, from this hut, we get a wood and a, a weapon. And I don't know what we're going to do with all this wood. Like... We can't even we can't even put it all to use buying ships or buying a buying a shed. This is too much wood for a shed. It's madness. Okay. 
then I think we're actually done. I think we're actually done. Okay. That's all the bonuses. Here we remove you and you two and you and get the final mountain. And then we take back the orange Vikings for their final run. If we somehow manage to score lower than we did last game, I'm going to have to be forced to admit that I have no idea what I'm doing over here. Because this feels like we feel really powerful, this run. It feels like we're just generating a ton of points all the time without having to do anything. Uh, there is no harvest on the final turn. However, there being no harvest triggers a couple of our things. So let's turn a game meat into a whale meat and two oil into some spices. And then I guess we just have some oil. Which is fine. Uh, okay. And then we have... The blue phase where nothing happens. The red phase where I am dealt weapon card number 300. It's a snare. And action. So I think... That it still makes sense for us to buy a longhouse. We, just, we have spare food. It'll be a place to put the food. But... That action that gives us a Gnar and a Longhouse is an action that also plays a Profession card. So we should probably get a Profession card first. We actually, we actually have a lot of different greens. So um, this space here that lets you pay two silver and, have, and, and upgrade as many different green tiles as you want is a super efficient way of getting rid of all this green. So we definitely want to do that. That's going to cost us just one man. Let's set aside a guy for that. We know what he's doing. This gets us the longhouse plus the nar. This upgrades those things. Then we need... We need to get a profession card, which we could do by playing any three space. What's a valuable three space? I mean, there's this. This is certainly very good. In fact, that's almost certainly the right move, right? Yes, we turn we turn one of our 1500 ores into just anything we can build. Let's start with that. Turn an ore into stuff. Draw an occupation card. Show me something awesome. Fighter. With one, two, or three long ships holding two to three ore each, get... Okay, so this is a one-time bonus when you play Fighter. Based on the amount of longships with ore, you can get rewards. This does actually nothing for us, because we, we we will get no benefit and it has no points on it. That's a shame. I guess they can't all be, like, mind-blowingly ridiculously successful. So... Feels to me like we want to take the anvil, because it's the biggest one. But I gotta make sure that we actually have a space for it first. We totally do. Right? That works. If we can make that happen. So we also have this robe, though, which um, currently can't go anywhere except right there. So the anvil is not necessarily gaining us all that much. Because it's filling in a spot that's already sort of spoken for. What we probably want to get is just the largest number of spaces that will fit into two rows. It's actually not a thing that... That there's a ton of. Uh, it might be one of these, honestly. It might be this one. Right, because we don't have a, we don't have a very large space left on either of the islands. But like that, that five spaces in an L shape fits really nicely right here. Okay, let's take it. That feels okay. Um, it's may maybe not worth spending three guys for. But I was really hoping the occupation card was going to be good. Okay, so we could try to get another one. Uh, what else do we want to do? We could flax to linen before we do the, the NAR upgrade, because that's another green tile that we don't yet have, so it'll get upgraded for free. And we certainly don't need the flax as food. Oh no, flax to linen's covered already. I did it last turn. Never mind. 
We could... Boy, what could we do? We don't have a hide, so if we if we got a hide somehow, that would flip. Which we could do in a bunch of different ways. We certainly have the resources to hunt. Boy, game meat is just, like, not valuable anymore, though. We have too much already. Yeah, I might not have left us enough room to grow into the final turn. That's a thing that happens sometimes. Okay, we have to decide if we're going to take another occupation card somehow. We could just play this. Take two silver, two occupation cards. Or take two cards, gain a silver. And then play one of them. There's not a way to draw occupation cards with a single Viking, unfortunately. We have four Vikings unspoken for, so if we found an action that makes sense to play with three... I mean, there's four upgrades, but four upgrades isn't necessary, I don't think. We, I think we're already going to be able to pretty easily fill out the rest of our negative spaces. Yeah, I, I maybe should have taken another island earlier on, just to give us more space to grow into. We're hitting the uh, we're hitting the points cap of this strategy. Okay, here's the thing we should do: we should get a whaling boat. Because we should end the turn by doing that, and we have about ten thousand wood. Let's get a whaling boat, which will give us another emigration space. Then I guess we do want to get another shed, don't we? Just like a normal shed. That'll let us cash in some points here. Um, sheds are here. This is more sheds than I usually build, in case you were wondering. Uh, and then... That actually gives us scoring room for all of our wood, right? Because we're going to spend two wood in a second here. So we actually only have two guys beyond the two things that we already know we want to do. No, wait. We don't have two guys. Ah, shoot. I forgot what the whole set of things I was trying to do was. Those two guys should have been two of the guys for that action, right? To be perfectly honest with you, I'm not sure that's more points, though. We can try to math it out real quick. Okay, let's say that I hadn't done those two things. We don't have the whaling boat, we don't have the shed. We go four dudes in to... um to build this stuff, which we're going to do anyway, so we may as well do it. We'll just go ahead and, and commit this. Uh, that lets us play our terrible profession card, with which is worth no points, so we'll just put it under here. Uh, and then we go two wood, two stone. That produces longhouse, because we need more buildings. Um, did not... There we go. Failed to lock. Longhouse plus Nar. Then we do this thing. Go here, pay two silver. And we upgrade as many different green tiles as we want, which is to say all of our green tiles. Right, that doesn't... There we go. Okay, then we would have taken these two guys and done this thing. That would have cost us seven coins. Would have flipped this ship into a Nar. And also would have turned this whaling boat into a small emigration. So we would have we would have lost um, eight plus the seven coins. So we would have lost 15 points to gain um, 18 to gain 25 points. So that's a 10. That's a 10 point play. It costs all of all of the dudes. Sorry, we would not have had a whaling boat. So forget some of those points. It is in fact 12 points. For it's only a six point gain. We pay 12 to get 18. 
Then we also don't have the shed, which is going to be worth... Uh, it's going to be worth 8 points minus... It's going to be worth 6 points. No, I think, I think this ends up being worth more points. Having spread out and gotten a bunch of extra stuff done instead of taking the big four point, the big four man action that we were planning on. And we still get to emigrate the whaling ship. So what do we want to do with this last guy? We have one guy who's not yet spoken for. He can go get us some points somewhere. Probably the best thing he can do is... I suppose he can hunt? Okay, hold on a second. Let's Let's think about this. This guy is going to cover up that space with the whaling boat, right? He's going to do this action. Whaling boat to take a small emigration. So we have to cover that much food. And then any food we... Some of this food needs to go in the longhouse too, just to generate points. So if we're talking about just raw food coverage... We have this and this... And honestly, this probably doesn't even fit in the longhouse, I think. And that's it. So then we have we have all these tiles just to go in the longhouse and score points. Uh, <clears throat> so we don't really need to worry about food or anything. This one guy just needs to get us some tiles. If he gets us a... You know what, if he gets us a game meat, we can still use it. Because we'll put one of the game meat right here, and then the other one can cover up some of that stuff. We're not going to be able to cover everything. The milk is awkward. Like, the, the milk plus beans is a little bit awkward. Uh, we could also just... No, we can't just go get a runestone. That's pretty bad, points-wise. Um, we could do... Hunting is better than catching fish. We can't raid because we don't have the right kind of ship. Uh, we could take two things off a mountain, which, you know, gets us two points. So anything else we do is like we're, what we're comparing it against is, is get two points. I don't think we want to slaughter one of the sheep. I don't think... Take a stone... I think this is going to end up being two points, because we lose a point from the stone that we would have put in the shed, but we gain a point, and then we cover up two uh, minus ones. So it's all kind of two points, huh? I guess let's hunt. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm missing something, and the hunt ends up being a little bit more valuable. But the hunt is definitely at least two points. So we're looking for three or less... We don't really want to spend a wood on this, because we actually score all of this wood. But I guess the question is, do I think I'm going to roll a three and two rolls? If I, <laughs> if I don't, if I throw this back um, and we don't roll a three or lower, I'm going to feel like an idiot. So I'm just going to take the four. We'll pay three bows and a wood. To get a game meat and a hide. And I could have done this in a different order and turned that hide blue, but my guess is it's not going to matter because we have so much other blue stuff. Um, and then we do the other thing we know we wanted to do, which is turn the whale boat into a small emigration. It's a thing we probably ought to do more than once per game. Okay, and then we're out of actions. Your long nightmare is finally over. So we're moving to the income phase. First things first. Steward. Put a stone in a shed. Get a point. Hooray. Then, obviously we, we want to cover all this. So let's make that happen. It shouldn't be too, too hard. Uh, we have some weirdness with the, the tools. They're a strange shape, so... Let's do this with the tools, just to get them out of the way. Put the hide up here, where it's nice and safe. And then... Sorry, we had to... The only place we can put the treasure chest is right here. No overhang allowed. And then we, like, use rune stones to... Gap this thing out. Then 
That is a little awkward. If this was silverware, we could have put it here and we could have used this as a space for like chests and spice. Yeah, that's... That may actually have been... Bad. Us not converting that might actually have been a problem. Uh, spices go here and here pretty easily. That's pretty good. Uh, in order for this to be legal, obviously we have to um, place a whole bunch of ore. And then a whole bunch of coins, which is fine because the ore wasn't worth anything otherwise. Uh, I need to break one of these down into a pair of twos. Put it here and here. And look at this. This time I didn't even place two green tiles adjacent to each other on the home board. You could be forgiven for mistaking me for a person who uh, understands the game. And then uh, we have no other income to build towards. So that's a fine place to stop for the moment for the income phase. So we get 9, 27. 27 final income, which obviously we won't take, but that'll be a scoring thing. The sheep gives birth. And finally, we feast on these foods. Hold on a second. Before we feast, before we determine what is for sure in the feast, let's take all this stuff over here and try to jam it all into scoring positions. Uh, we also, before we go into scoring positions, we definitely want to place coins over these minus twos. That is a point positive coin, which is not a thing you get a chance to do all that often. Okay, so right here, we can go chest there. Well, hold on. Let's, let's do the food stuff first. So that's a three-point game meet. This is a three-point game meet. And then we can put, like, a milk here. Sorry, we should put the beans here. So that we have a place to put this. The peas can go there and get us a point that way. And then we have a milk in a chest that actually can't score anything. Yeah, that's a small inefficiency, huh? Is that really the case? Did I not leap myself? Yeah, I think it is the case. It's Part of it's just like the weird the positioning of the struts in the longhouse. Uh, there's places where you can't put stuff. If we... Nope. Nope, there's nothing we can do. Okay, and then also... To place this wood a little bit here... All right, I think that is our final actual state. We just have spare food. Um, no, there's no way we could use the milk to reclaim the flax, right? I mean, we could, but even if we rearrange this stuff to make it ideal for the flax to be placed, like if we move the peas over here. No, never mind. There's just no way to do this. Yeah, we can't. We can't use this milk to buy any more points by moving the flax into the longhouse or anything. I think we're just out of options. We needed to, at some point, buy another food building. Stow some food in. But overall, I think this is going to end up being an okay score. So we, uh, we feasted on this, and then we are done. Hey, let's score it. I am feeling positive about this. I'm, like, really nervous and looking over and over again. Man, am I sure? Am I sure I didn't put green tiles next to each other? But yeah, I think we're cool. So, uh, ships. This time we have ship points. Not totally ideal. You don't really want to have ship points. You want to emigrate all those ships. Alright, 28 points of emigration. Exploration boards. We have 25 points of islands, it turns out. Sheds and houses. 25, uh, 33, 40. 40 points of that. Although we have more negatives there than we did last time. Uh, sheep and cattle. We have 8 points of sheep. Occupations. Our occupations are not as high scoring. We have seven total points. Man, maybe, maybe this isn't going to be a better score. We do have 14 loose silver. And then our final income was uh, 27. And we do, in fact, get the two points for having stolen the English crown. Take that. All right. And then negatives. We have zero negatives on our home board. On our exploration boards, we have actually just one. Is this the only this is the only space we didn't fill? It's kind of unusual. It's actually like really good coverage. 
Uh, sheds and houses, we have significantly more. So it's minus one from exploration boards. Uh, on this one, we have five. On this one, we have four. On this one, we have one. And on this one, we have one. So that's negative 11. And we do not have a thing penalty because I keep my people fed. So I think that's proper... Yeah, that's properly the final score, which is to say, uh, sorry, hold on a second. I got to keep that open so that I can type all those numbers into the calculator. Uh, it does look like we did better. It looks like we did considerably better. Wait a minute. That number is very high. Okay, the numbers I just typed into this calculator yielded uh, 144. So we're just going <laughs> to double check that. Unfortunately, uh, the calculator does not maintain the uh, the equation at the top of the screen after you hit enter. It would have made it really easy to double check my work here. But hey, why would you design a thing in a way that people could actually use it? You ever think that at like big companies like Microsoft, they make fun of the engineers who want who care about usability? Like, what are you, a customer bootlicker? No, that's totally what this says. That just, yeah, it says that we scored 144 points. I mean, I did feel like we were doing better. I felt, I'm a little embarrassed to have not even had enough space to put all of our, all of our tiles down. I definitely should have picked up another thing somewhere. But on the whole, this felt like a very successful strategy. And as long as I didn't break the rules terribly somehow, it's like pretty good points. Uh, I, I have to say... Uh, Stewart was so much better than our starting profession last game. Stewart ended up being like nine points or something. It's uh, it's a lot better than a card that's so weak we don't even bother to play it. So I think, provided that nothing went horribly, horribly awry there, uh, that's going to be it for us for this episode. It's pretty good. That was a pretty good one. I don't know if I'm going to beat that <laughs> next game, but there is going to be one more. Come back in a couple of hours for that, and we'll see you then.